Hey, I'm Lawrence, co-founder of The Companion, where fans go after the show. A couple of weeks ago, I sat down for an exclusive members-only conversation with Brad Wright, co-creator of SG-1, Atlantis, and Universe, for 90 minutes of deep industry insights, writing wisdom, and the latest on a fourth Stargate series. We've teamed up with our friends at GateWorld to bring you this insightful 10-minute segment from the interview, and I think you're going to love it. The full video drops December 16th exclusively for members of The Companion. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to ask about a new Stargate project. And the fact is, I just want everybody to know that MGM, MGM and I are working on something. Uh, it's just too early to talk about. And, uh, and uh, it's partly too early because there's a pandemic going on. Uh, and that's kind of ground a few things to a, to a, a halt. But, uh, but we are working on something. It's very exciting. It's something that, uh, that, that, uh, that we've been talking about for, for a while now. And uh, I love it. I'm excited to, to, to have the possibility of making it someday soon or someday period. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's, I'll say this much. I'll say that um, it, it, it exists in the universe that, that you already know. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not a reboot. It's not a completely new thing. It's uh, a continuation. And I'll leave it at that. I'm not allowed to say anything. We want to hear, Brad. That's what we want to hear. Good. Good. Everybody's just going offline now, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, all I want to We're done. We've done our job. <laughs> AMA. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, wow. That's exciting. It's exciting. I don't know if I'm going to see if there's any, you know, what's going on in the chat here, but hopefully. Okay. Go people, ahead. Uh, are loving that. Um, I'm seeing lots of woos, lots of Woo. claps. Thank yous, well dones. We need more Stargates. That's what's happening. Uh, that's awesome. Oh, great news. What a way to kick off the yeah. AMA. Uh, one of the other members had asked, uh, Ian Zania. He, he was asking, uh, what role did John Scalzi play? And what were some of um, his notable con contributions uh, you know, in Stargate universe? OK, so, so um, John, John what he did was he, he he was at home and we I met him we met him once we flew him out we had a meeting but what he did was he would read a script once once I thought it was in good enough shape to share and he read it from the from a science perspective and and from a because with SG we were trying to be more accurate you know my penchant for trying to be a little more accurate in terms of science and science fiction was uh, was getting more serious and John is a smart man and his and uh, his knowledge is encyclopedic. I mean, he he would read the scripts and and say, you know, you can't possibly do that in that much time. If we were talking about a, you know, a, a flight at a certain speed, to he's just smart. And uh, but also, he's also very creative. So he would talk about character and and uh, as as well. But mainly, he was our science fiction consultant. And and uh, I, I I loved getting his insights and 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 it's. Funny, I, I said uh, in my essay too, um, I'm always just a little bit embarrassed uh, when I talk to uh, uh, real scientists about science fiction, especially my science fiction, because, you know, you, you start talking about, and it happened with John, you start talking about a structure in, in, in the, that, that, that was visible after the Big Bang that indicated that something happened before the Big Bang, uh, evidence of... Uh, of life before life was possible to exist. And, uh, and I remember getting the email and him going, wow, heady stuff, man. <laughs> and, and thinking, and thinking to myself, um, and, and being a little bit embarrassed because I knew that he understood this stuff much, much more than I do, but, but he, he completely got it and completely, uh, completely helped us form that, that part of the story. It was great. Arctic goddess one uh, from Twitter asks, what ancient technology do you wish was real? And that we could use in our daily lives now. I think a, a faster than light travel would would solve an enormous amount of problems. Uh, yeah, I think we could explore. Uh, it really would. But with that would come anti gravity. I mean, a, ancient technology as uh, you know in spaceships would would be great. I think it would be. I think it would be wonderful. I think it would be really really great if humanity could figure out a way to uh, to travel faster than light and go to other worlds. That would be wonderful. Um, there's a lot of uh, stumbling blocks to that. There's a lot of a lot in the way in terms of real science. You can't just go faster, you know. You you, you actually have to come up with a way of, of of changing a fundamental law of the universe, altering it in a way that that we haven't come up with yet. 
and even then you have to you have to figure out uh, how that gets around things like time dilation and and uh, and you have to come up with a power source for that. I mean, even if you came up with the science to make it happen, like like the uh, Albuquerque drive, uh, I think I pronounced that right. I'm not sure. Like warp drive, basically. Uh, you, you would, you know, I, I don't think it, there's a dilithium crystal around that's going to do it. You know what I mean? We, uh, so that would be great, but uh, but it's it's a real big challenge, and and uh, I don't think I'll see that in my lifetime. It's a dream, though. It would be pretty cool. Um, all right, another Stargatey kind of question. Hunter Falk Burgess asks: Out of all the characters, worlds, and stories that we got to see in the Stargate franchise, uh, which ones would you want to revisit, and why? I always wanted to. Do, <laughs> this is kind of funny. I always I, I always wanted to do another Ashen story. I liked the Ashen, like again, twenty ten. I just I thought that their plan was so insidious. But Rob Cooper used to tease me about it because he, he felt <laughs> that the long game that the Ashen played um, uh, was undramatic, inherently undramatic, uh, which is why it ended up playing well as a time travel story, because by the time we realized what their plan was, it was already too late. And the only solution was to, to find a way to send a message back and, and um, <laughs> not meet them in the first place. Obviously, I have a thing for time travel, but um, uh, I think Rob's joke was, uh, "Oh my God, they stopped us from being able to grow corn," which was pretty funny. <laughs> at least it was for me in the, at the time. I killed myself. Uh, but uh, I thought I thought I could come up with another long game type story. I, I just there was something interesting uh, about a culture that that had that sense of superiority and and sense of the long game of, well, you know, we'll, we'll win. It'll just take a hundred years. I just yeah. thought that was so insidious. Um, and I only got two episodes in that world. And, um, but you know, there might've been a third out there. Uh, yeah, I'll stick with that answer. <laughs> oh yeah. No, the, the great, great. Characters. Oh, and the Knox. Uh, I would, I, I love the yeah. Knox. I thought the Knox were fun. Uh, they were they were they were so great, but but again, they were who they were, who they who they ultimately were in the in the in that episode, kind of precluded our ever seeing them again. It was like, oh, you're so young to us, you know, uh, of us, like you're not ready. You're just so not ready to to be our friends, you know. Ian uh, Zania, he asked, uh, I have some cool. I've seen some cool concept art uh, for an Atlantis DHD. It was quite different from the kind of like SG-1 style DHD. And what was the ultimate reason for going with that, which is essentially like a same DHD off-world uh, for the off-world gates uh, while keeping the decidedly cooler DHD for Atlantis control room and, and the puddle jumpers? It becomes, a, it becomes an art department thing. It becomes a design aesthetic. The one thing that I wanted, I don't know, I mean, decidedly cooler. We wanted the, uh, the puddle jumper should have had, had to have its own DHD built in, right? So it had to be part of that control panel. I really wanted uh, always uh, uh, in the SG-1 Atlantis SGU and going forward for there to be a unique Stargate as well. Uh, I think that I think that the Atlantis gate has a digital quality uh, and, and so it seems more uh, you know advanced. Keep in mind that Atlantis could have existed uh, and evolved and, and grown uh, after long after it left. But um, but we wanted it to have a different look, a different color, so that so that you knew just by looking at the icon of the Stargate, oh, this is an Atlantis episode. Oh, this is um, this is SGU, um, and the design of the Destiny itself, we struggled with that, and it, it it's literally one of those drawing on a napkin stories. Uh, I just liter I sketched, I was sketching shapes, right? and I and. And I was looking at a chevron and kind of elongated it and, and sent literally that chevron shape to, uh, to James, our, uh, our, our designer, and, and uh, he made it real from there. But, but the destiny itself is, is, is an evolution of the Stargate shape. Uh, we just wanted each show to have a visual uh, template all of its own, unique to it. And, uh, and that's really the core reason for that difference. Our second special guest, and he's actually queued up right now, and he's been waiting in this virtual backstage. So we're going to see if we can actually oh, bring him hello. in. He might bring me out, just in case. <laughs> hello. I, you hey, know, Joe. I was 
I was listening to you talk about the efficiencies of producing Stargate. And frankly, you know, you sound like me or I, I sound like you because whenever I do a, an interview, I talk about dark matter and the fact that you hear horror stories about other productions writing outlines on, on, on napkins or getting scripts the night before. And I always tell people, you know, the reason Dark Matter was such a pleasant set and everyone was happy to be there uh, was because we prepared. And the reason we were able to prepare is because I learned it from you and Rob on Stargate. The fact that, you know, if you're efficient, um, it just makes life easier on everyone and the money ends up on screen. Um, and it, you know, just listening to you talk about that made me, made me smile. So, uh, you know, well, great. I remember you visiting the Dark Matter set and I introduced you as my mentor. And I remember you laughing it off, but but it is true. I mean, the reason Dark Matter turned out as as, as great as it was and it has its, its fan base is because of everything I learned working under you on Stargate. Well, that's great, Joe. And and it's great that uh, it's great that Dark Matter did so great and looked great, by the way. Thank it you. Was, uh, Thank you. It was a great show. It's a I, shame it didn't I, continue. We both got the three it, season curse. <laughs> I got it with Travelers, and you got it with Dark Matter. We did. We did. Oh, well. But uh, I came. I came armed with two questions. Now, uh, forgive me. I'm late to, to the to the chat. So, in case someone has asked it, I'll move on. But you know, I would like to know what Briefs. was. Briefs, yes. Okay, so basically, I only have one question. Then, um, what was the, what, what was what was your most challenging episode to produce, and why? In your the span of your career, do you remember the do you remember the episode uh, on the planet with the with the with the Cirque du Soleil mimes? That yes, Robert that wrote? that was before uh, my time. That was season two. I think that yes. was was it. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Out Sansa. of mind, maybe was it out of mind? The, uh, what 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 we realized was that in the in the uh, that we were putting where we shot it, which was out in a place called uh, Stokes Pit, which is gone now. By the way, it's just buildings, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> which I'm sure you lament, Joe. Uh, 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 we were putting these people uh, that were dressed in virtually nothing but makeup uh, outside. Uh, in temperatures that were pretty much zero and asking them to act uh, and and uh, act in an alien sort of way. Um, speaking of back to the biological mm -hmm. question. Um, and, uh, and I thought, oh my God, we're going to kill somebody. Uh, they're going to freeze to death. And one of them happened to be a friend of mine uh, who I'd gone to university with. So we had all these heaters set up. <laughs> But so that, but it ended up the sun came out and, and it didn't rain. And I thought all their makeup would have run off too if it had rained. I was, it was, it was like so scary. Joe, thank you so much. All right. See you guys later. See you, Joe. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. Thank, to be honest, all of the members who showed up and asked all the questions, there was, there's so many that we couldn't get through uh, that, you know, I've been scrolling through, whether it was in, in the comments or, Previously, so I'll send them over to you, Brad. Well, if you yeah, want to take a I'll, look at them. I'll, at uh, I'll, maybe I can answer uh, some more online. Also, you know, I, guys, I have to say, I, I think the companion is a great idea, and and I really enjoyed writing my essay, and I, and I, I look forward to writing more. And uh, I really, I, I, I think that um, I think that you're on to something really cool. So, uh, fingers crossed for bigger things. Yeah, thank no, thank you, and. Um, yeah, if you have any other final thoughts, Brad, it's over to you. Otherwise, uh, you know, thanks to everyone else for coming. Thank you, guys. Bye, everybody. Okay. Take care. That was an awesome conversation. For the full 90-minute interview, original writing from writers like Brad, and brain-bending Stargate quizzes, sign up for a free trial. Details in the description below. And thanks to Darren at GateWorld, the companion team, and of course, Brad, for helping make all of this possible.